It's an honor for me to be here, so I really thanks to the organization. I'm from Mendoza, and of course I'm Natalia, or Daniel, he couldn't come. And I represent the Cathedra Alberdi, subject Alberdi. Mendoza is, uh, is the five economy in Argentina. It's a, it's a province in the west of the, of the country and it's the eighth capital of wine, so you are really welcome to visit it, us and also to know a little bit more about the Austrian economic or the roots of Austrian economic in Mendoza. Well, first of all, I want to remember a friend of mine who died his year. Uh, he was uh, Jose Levy. Uh, he had a PhD in economics. He was related to the Center of Social Studies he published different articles in press, and he even sent a paper to this Congress in Rosario in Argentina, and I had the honor of reading it. And unfortunately, the last years of his life, he was prostrate, and he did not appear in public. But I had the opportunity to exchange numerous emails on economics and epistemology about Kant and Mises, and of course, I'm going to miss him a lot and so in this presentation, I also want to remember him, okay? I'm going to make a briefly uh, presentation of my paper. That is, uh, it has an introduction, main exponents, the evolution in Mendoza, the method, the main contribution and the actuality of the psychologi psychological school of economics now in Mendoza. Um, I, I think that the, the roots of the Austrian economics in Mendoza uh, has really specific characteristics, and this is with, uh, which I've, uh, I'm going to try to expose here, okay? The main exponent is Carlos Becker, Charles Becker. Uh, he was born in, in the north of Germany, but he was born in Prussia in, that, in those days. So he became German. He was uh, studied in Berlin, Fribourg, Paris, Geneva. In, uh, 20, in 1976, he was, uh, he was offered a contract at the economic section of the International Labor Office. And in his biography, he said that it was tragic to see where Europe was hidden and could do nothing to stop it. Uh, this is interesting because it was like the, the similar feelings that Mises had on those days. In, uh, in 1939, it was the, the start of the Second World War and he was uh, following by the German consulate, so he was, he, he was to escape. He had to escape from Europe. At that moment, he was offered a contract and the recently created uh, University of uh, Mendoza, the National University of Mendoza. So he settled in Mendoza with his French wife in 1940, and he held several professorships at the university. In fact, uh, at, that, at those times, there was a faculty of science. In this faculty, it was created a school of economic science that then became the faculty of economic science. And Becker was uh, in charge of making the curricula for these two institutions with the visions of uh, the Austrian economics. Uh, so at the biography, authors such as Menger, von Wieser, von Baber, uh, Bastiat, um, and Condillac appears. In 1945, he wrote his main, uh, his main uh, book that was uh, The War Economy in the Darkness, who was republished in 1952. And in this book, he uh, explained uh, what happened with the economy bet in between the First Wars, uh, World War and the Second World War. In 1955, he uh, started to be a director of the Institute of Economic Research that uh, also depends of the University of Cuyo. Uh, he became professor at the University of Córdoba, uh, but he resigned because it was really difficult for, hi for him to uh, attend the, the both subject in Mendoza and in Córdoba. He also was uh, 
contract as advisor to the Minister of Labor and Social Security, but he also resigned because the, the vision of the economy of those days, it was contrary of his vision, so he resigned. In 1961, he traveled to Europe and he attended a Montpellerin Society meeting. Uh, he, he, has the, he had the opportunity to meet with uh, Robke, Ref, and the collaborator of Ed Hart and, and those in that moment. In the 1969, he was declared Emeritus Professor of the Faculty of Economics, and he has a lot of disciples in, in Mendoza who became a professor of the university. His more outstanding disciple was Francisco Naval Rovilches, who was the other main exponent of the Austrian economics in Mendoza. At 1946, he, he, became, he became a student of the faculty, but he wanted to study law, but his father didn't allow him to go to Cordoba. So he studied at the University of Mendoza. In 1955, he became professor of fundamentals of economics at the Faculty of Economics of the University Nacional of Cuyo. And he was professor for 11 years at the Law School of the University of Mendoza. And this is really important because um, all the accountants, economists, administrators, and lawyers over 40 years old had training in this economic thinking in Mendoza. I think this is, this is what we can call more or less a school of economics. In, uh, well, he gave numerous lectures at different institutions, important institutions, and he was promoted by Alberto Venegas Lynch in, in Argentina. In 1981, he, uh, he was uh, appointed a full member of the uh, National Academy of Economic Science. Uh, he's the only person from Mendoza who has this title, and he was also uh, the, the, uh, the um, opportunity to attend a meet of the Montpelleran Society that took, uh, that was, uh, um, that, that was held in Chile. Uh, at, at this reunion and this meeting, he was uh, a, a small fight with Milton Friedman, and he always, always uh, enjoyed to tell us this anecdote because he was like, I'm really proud, I fight with Freeman. So that, is, that was Navarro Vilches, no? Um, until the 1985, he was widely consulted by the press, but then like a curtain of silence fell into him. And I think this was related uh, of about the, the mainstream at the university change in, in, in that year. I'm going to explain this later. Before, later. In 1994, he became also emeritus professor of the National University of Cuyo, and he was also a, a lot of disciples that became professor at the university. But what about the evolution in Mendoza of this, this school? What happened in Mendoza? Well, as I said, in 1940, uh, it was created the School of Economics at the university. It became faculty in 1957, and it became faculty, and it was uh, Charles, Meng uh, Charles Baker who, has the, the, who, who made the curricula. But in uh, 1962, the professor Arnold Haberger arrived in Mendoza and beginning the Cuyo program. This, uh, this was the first program established through the Alliance of Programs. This, this was during Kennedy government, and this was for promoting the relationship, the relation between Latin America and the States. And was, what, what, this, uh, what was uh, the, this alliance uh, the, or this program? They took students from Mendoza. They gave him scholarship to study at uh, Chicago University. They became doctors at Chicago University, and then re they returned to Mendoza and became professor at the university. And so they start to change the curricula. The first reformulation was in 1985, and they eliminate almost all the Austrian subjects. They just left the, the, uh, the subject of uh, Navarro Vilches, but it became a semestral subject. And there was a second reformulator uh, reformulate in 
1989, um, and uh, at, at those moments, the, the subject was eliminated. And after those, it became again a subject, but elective, an elective one. But uh, at this point, nobody chose this subject because it has nothing to do with the mainstream of economy of the university. So it was like, it was how the, the, this, the vision of economists at the faculty changed from this Austrian vision to the Chicago, Chicago school. What is the, the, the main thing about this school in Mendoza? Well, uh, if I had to talk about the method, uh, Becker and, and Vilches uh, bases his epistemology in Condillac. Condillac was an, an Enlightenment philosopher influenced by Locke and Newton, and for him, all knowledge came from sensation, and these were modification of the soul, occurring when our sense came in contact with things of the external world. Well, Becker and Navarro Vilches, based on, on this, and this decompose the phenomena as a principle and without losing the idea of the whole, since knowledge, knowledge of the parts are always more feasible than uh, to learn that the whole. This decomposition was uh, accompanied by the discovery of the relation between the parts and the phenomena and the identification of the starting point, the origin or the, the, the determining cause of the, uh, of the phenomena, okay? Um, it was interesting because Condillac uh, has a book writing in 77, uh, 76, in 1776, it was trade and government considered relative to each other. It was at the same time that Adam Smith, Smith books, okay? Uh, but, well, Condillac was Catholics, and, and those, in, in those years, Catholics wasn't really popular, so the, the books of Smith was popular and, and not the books of, of Condillac. And there's an anecdote about this. I don't know if it is true, but Baker told to Bilches, and Bilches told to me that Baker found the books of uh, Condillac during a storm in Prussia. He was hiding in a barn, and he found all the books under the straw. I don't know if it is true, but it's like a really good anecdote because we don't have uh, we don't have another another um, clue about the, the, the about the started of this. Uh, this uh, relation between Baker and Condillac, uh, only this anecdote, okay? Um, what are the main contributions of, of Baker and also of Navarro Vilches? Okay, Baker was really concerned about language. Uh, for him, the importance of language it was an instrument to maintain the distinction discovered and recognized utility production, savings, invest money, price, etc. For, for Baker, doing science was to make an exact language with representative, universal, and definitive words, searching and discovering the natural causal order of the facts, which as a whole compose the system of knowledge discovered and structured by the, nat the natural causal laws. To obtain this result, the analytical scientific method was properly used. Bilches uh, described in, in deep in this, this method. Uh, Baker was also concerned about the existence of necessary and constant relations against which all human struggle was useless in economics and social phenomena. Also was Bilches who uh, afterward described these natural uh, and necessary relations. And he, he described the, the need of, uh, for an economic labor, uh, laboratory, and he was thinking about an institution with international scientific authority with the function of controlling the language in, uh, in economics. Later, um, Bill just is going to be, uh, it, it, was, it, it was not in, uh, in agree with this, with this laboratory. What are the main contribution of Navarro Vilches? Was, well, as I said, he described in, in deepened this causal qualitative and analytical method 
that consisted in three stage, a descriptive one, an explan explanatory, and then a f an experimental one. And it was, it was really important because if you had the habit of, of thinking in, with this method, uh, you incorporated it into, your, into all aspects of your life. In fact, I, I used to work as a professor and a consultant on, on, on quality process, and I used to uh, explain how to find problems in an organization with, with this method. It's like you find the problem, you, you, you can identify the causes and the effects, so then you can uh, propose solutions. He also speaks about the necessary natural relations of economy. These, these are a formulation of the economic law inspiring Menger, but he added another law. He made a seminar paper on the theory of value, identified two aspects of the value, a qualitative one and also a quantitative one, and it was Baker who believed that this was really a great contribution. And he made a lot of more things, but he, he has um, um, this state monetarist emissionism and the evolution of its consequences. It was a lecture that he gave during uh, his nominated from the Academy of Economic Science. And he proposed a solution to the, to the crisis uh, uh, who, who is established the gold standard as a monetary system of which he was a fervent supporter. What is the actuality of the Psychological School of Economics in Mendoza? Okay, a group of disciples are trying to transmit the importance and impact of the developments of Baker and Vilches, not only for Mendoza, but also for the Austrian economics. We are reprinting the, this, this lecture, Emissionismo Monetario Estatal and the Evolution of Its Consequence, which is this book, it's printing again. We are trying to rescue and organize the work of Carlos Becker and also of Francisco Navarro Vilches to di digitalize it and disseminate, disseminate it. And we are working in the compilation of a treatise of, on, on economics to show the validity of the contribution of these two titans of freedom. The story of these two great scholars of economic science generated and still generates today many followers who see in their work a path, a light, a headlight of, uh, for Argentina to return to the origins of freedom that the great Juan Bautista Alberti embodied in the national constitution. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Natalia, for your presentation. Thank you very much. It was really good, wonderful. And now we are starting the questions and answers. Uh, someone has a question for Natalia? OK. Uh, if they, they don't have, I have one. OK. Uh, we see in Argentina a lot of like, liberal and uh, libertarian ideas and people that uh, uh, defense more liberty to individuals, but uh, there's a const contrast between these ideas and the Argentina reality. How can you explain that a rich society as Argentina was in the beginning of the uh, 20th century became this, I don't know, poor society and interventionist and uh, leftist that we see right now? Well, I think that here in Europe, you have the war. We have Peronism, that is more, yeah, it's more a virus. And, uh, but nevertheless, uh, and that is what it's really, uh, I, I think really Navarro, Vilches, and Baker uh, had a huge impact. In Mendoza, uh, per Peronism is not win in the, in the last election. And we are more open, and and we are uh, we didn't even uh, lock down with uh, no. this yeah with this uh, virus. So I think that um, this is the the the, um, the teachers the, or the, the the problem is Buenos Aires. So sorry. The problem is Buenos Aires. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
Okay. The problem is Buenos Aires, and yeah. almost all the population is there, so they yeah. choose the president for the rest of the okay. Argentinian people. So I think even in Mendoza, we have these ideas. We have to spread to Buenos Aires. Yeah. So we are going to, to be, uh, we are going to, we are going to change the, re the reality for Argentina. Okay, Natalia, thank you very much. Thank Your you. Your time is finished. Thank you.